should I put a disclaimer at the beginning of this? <laughs> That's not your favorite word. Yes. This is not the episode for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now I feel I need to say it a few more times to make that. I know, right? Just the, uh, this will be like the part where I fade out. Hello, makers. Welcome to the Making Conversation podcast, where we chat all about making the app and the act. I'm Jen, head of marketing here at Making. My pronouns are she, her, and my making app username is Knit Pearl. Now, today's guest has been an important part of the making community for a long time now. She's taught classes, she can be seen posting her makes in the app's feed, and she's just an all around amazing human being. So I'm really excited to have you here, Mariah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here as well. My name is Mariah. My pronouns are she, her. Um, You can find me on the making app and pretty much everywhere else as Mariah Knits. I am obviously a knitter, but I'm also a licensed physical therapist. And that's part of why I was called here today is yes. to, <laughs> it's been so, my journey has been so fun. Cause like, I like to teach knitting as well. So I teach a lot on the making app and somehow physical therapy has leaked its way into all of that. Yeah. So when did you become a maker? What was that journey like for you? I real really the beginning of the journey, like for real, like things got real. Um, <laughs> was at the same time I was graduating from physical therapy school. So it was all around the same time. I always say my grandmother taught me to knit when I was very little and I was going to make Barbie clothes, but that never took off. (laughs) And I was in my um, last year of physical therapy school. I was on a clinical. I was home with at my mom's house and my grandmother was visiting for the holidays and she taught me to knit and it just flourished from there it never stopped (laughs) so it's really been along the same path as pt and knitting obviously you know your handle is right it's so you knit but is there anything any other crafts or making things that you do absolutely so i have also always loved gardening i love plants um might be able to see some of my plants behind me and that process of like nature and and growing things i started hearing about natural dyeing and Mm. got really interested in naturally dyeing yarn so i think i just posted it today i'm very excited i grew my flowers in my own garden and dyed with them and i just i don't it's so it's so much fun just this full connection of growing something and using that to create color it's just fantastic. It's so much fun. And there's like a science and chemistry to it. So um, ah. it, it really like scratches that part of my brain as well. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, what did you dye with? I use, I grew Coreopsis and I dyed one little mini skein and that came out this beautiful orange. It's also amazing how like nature can create these amazing colors. I know. Um, it's, it's just so amazing. I love nature. And then I also had some, <laughs> I, do, I love the body. I love, I love science. It's just so, it's just so fascinating. Um, but I also had some kitchen scraps um, for red onion skins and I dyed that and the other skin came out green. It is so fascinating because my brain is not, I am not a math brain, even though I love to knit. I think that that's part of why I like, even just like thinking about pattern design to me is like, my brain just like implodes in that very moment. So I'm just like, I will follow what other people tell me to do. And I can do that. And the math that I can do is like, I will measure my bust and figure out which size to do. But other than that, I'm not a math person. So it always amazes me. It's chemistry, but it's, it's also, there's just so much freedom to it. Mm -hmm. So yes, if I wanted to try to get the same color every time with the Coreopsis, I would make sure that the acidity levels are certain and measure or you could just see what happens and and have fun with whatever comes out. And yeah, maybe the next time I don't get orange or really I want to adjust the pH and try to get pink. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But every time, whatever comes out, I'm just so excited about. Let's get into what we're talking about today. Recently, I had gone through some like hip and foot stuff, which like, hello, 41. <laughs> And I tend to stay on top of this stuff with like my strength training. Um, Shout out to my fellow weightlifting crafters out there. But this was different. So I went to my chiropractor and we landed on 
you know, going to physical therapy. And it has really helped. And I went from waking up in the morning and, you know, after a very busy weekend of running around and, you know, like or hiking or something like that and having it being really hard to walk and like oh, very painful to like being able to like hop out of bed and just be fine. But it really got me thinking, like, how would I feel if I couldn't walk? And then, of course, my brain being riddled with anxiety went, oh, my <laughs> gosh, what if I couldn't knit? And then yeah. I was like, okay, we need to talk to Mariah. We need to talk to Mariah about this because, you know, there's such an importance of strengthening and stretching and taking care of the things that you use to craft, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, we talk a lot about how mentally crafting is so important and just kind of like a little side quest that we're going to take here. Like I came across an article the other day about how art, you know, making art and observing art can affect the brain. And this is from acrm.org. There's an increasing evidence in rehabilitation medicine and the field of neuroscience, brain stuff, <laughs> that art influences brain function by impacting brainwave patterns, emotions, and the nervous system. Art can also raise serotonin levels, etc. So we see such evidence that this thing that we do, whether it's knit or paint or create glass art or woodworking, et cetera, like that benefits us in so many ways, more than just like making cool clothes or, you know, being able to hang something beautiful on your wall. But beyond that to the mental part, we've talked a lot about the mental part of, of crafting, but we should also hit on the physical. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're here, right? <laughs> Mariah, let's talk about why physical therapy, strengthening, stretching, et cetera, is beneficial for us. Maybe we start with the possible injuries that could happen from sure. crafting. A lot of things that can happen, first of all, are going to be in your hands. You're using your hands. And we want to think about what's called overuse syndrome. Uh, so any of our activities, we're doing a repetitive motion over and over and over again. And one of the popular ones that a lot of people think about is like carpal tunnel syndrome. Fun fact, we all have two carpal tunnels. So I have a lot of people say, I have carpal tunnel. Buckle up. We're going to get nerdy. No, so I love the, it. Let's do it. <laughs> the bones in your hand, there are a bunch of bones in the bottom part here of your hand. They're called the carpal bones. And there's a bunch of them. Um, and I can never remember all of them. That's okay. There's this tendon that goes across right here, this big, thick tendon, and mm -hmm. it creates this tunnel. And through that tunnel is a nerve and some tendons up to your fingers. So that tunnel is your carpal tunnel. So you have one on each side. And if you think kind of where that is on your hand and where your hand is going to rest on your desk, like when you're working with a mouse or typing, you're going to put pressure on that area. Um, I just and moved mine. I was like, oh, God, yeah. I just <laughs> oh, realized gosh. what I was doing. <laughs> so carpal tunnel syndrome is when you get a um, thickening of that band, that tendon across there, mm -hmm. or that ligament, I apologize, mm -hmm. um, that gets thick and it'll pinch on the nerve. And that's what causes that tingling that goes up into your hand. Oh. So right there, one very specific, very common overuse syndrome that can happen, that can happen from our craft, any craft. You have your sewers who may be cutting a lot and doing a lot of cutting. That's a repetitive mm -hmm. motion. Um, so for your crocheters, they might get problems in one hand because they're using one hand more than the other. I think knitters have a, a great benefit if you learn both um, uh, English style and continental style, because if the mm -hmm. one hand hurts, you can use the other hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so all of these crafts that we do have this repetitive motion to it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where these overuse, overuse syndromes can come in. But it's not just your wrist or your hand or your fingers. It can be up in your elbow. So yeah. a lot of the muscles that move our hand um, those muscle bellies are actually in our forearm and a lot of them also attach at our elbow. So you can get a lot of pain in there as well. Um, anytime you have a joint, you can get inflammation and then it could, I mean, it's the leg bones connected to the hip bone. It's all connected. Yeah. And that's, what's great about seeing a physical therapist, especially if the issue is 
it doesn't even just have to be painful. It's limiting you from doing the things that you want to do. Mm-hmm. And so they're not only going to find, okay, yeah, your hip hurts, but is it really your hip? Maybe it's coming from your back. Um, sure, you want to exercise your hip, but also your hamstrings are tight and that crosses at your knee. It's all connected and they can find all of those pieces and work. We, we always are working the whole body. You know, Mm -hmm. it's never just, oh, your hand hurts. And this is why when I have taught um, my class on caring for your hands on the making app, one of the first things I do is go over posture. And Mm. I say, like, I know we're, I know this is supposed to be about hands and you just set up. I know. I was like, <laughs> I love it. Yes. Never we're talking time. about posture. Okay. I'll fix that. Talking about posture. <laughs> and it's, so it's the first thing that I start to talk about. Cause like, it, we're not going to go through these exercises um, for stretching your hands. If you're in a bad posture or mm-hmm. not, not even a bad posture. If you're in a posture that's not conducive for the exercises. Cause the key here, if we boil it down to what it really is, it's movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's moving from position to position, whatever that may be. It What happens when we make, we stay in the same position for a long period of time. Because of course, we're making something and it makes us feel good. So I'm not going to stop. <laughs> when I stop, yeah, I don't feel and, good. So and like- you know what? I've got a backlog of Real Housewives of New York that I need to catch up on while I'm <laughs> yeah, doing this. And so do. I'm not moving. You've got stuff hours. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's when it starts to become a problem. And it's really... You know, it's, it's everything in moderation. Mm. I can only knit, I can only knit socks for a little bit. Cause actually then I start to get pain in my elbow because it's small needles and small yarn and it's a tighter gauge. So I know when I'm starting to hurt on my elbow, it's time to stop and go knit something else yeah. <laughs> or do my stretches or go in the garden. So it's, it's just changing your movement and, and going from one thing to the next and not just staying in one position all the time. Okay. Um, I have so many questions. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, okay. When it comes to carpal tunnel, I am very lightly knocking on my wooden desk because if I do it too much, the dogs will think someone's at the door and they will just go with the approach. I have never had carpal tunnel. I have, have never had all of never had carpal tunnel, tunnel syndrome. Syndrome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I have to. I've never had the syndrome. Obviously, like very much a disclaimer. If you're listening to this and you're like, that's what it feels like for me. Like we're not diagnosing anyone. I just want, I want to know like, what does that feel like so that you can go, okay, maybe I should go to my doctor and like not craft until I can do that so that I don't Mm -hmm. over hurt myself. It may be carpal tunnel syndrome or it may be other things, but Mm -hmm. it's anytime you're feeling pins and needles tingling in your fingers, that's nerve. And nerves, we don't mess with nerves. When they get upset, we stop, okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is where it's a difference between my muscles are sore and that's okay. My joints are achy and unfortunately we're get, you know, you get old and that happens. But nerves are a no-no, you don't mess with them. So if you feel pins and needles tingling, um, like shooting, like electric shock shooting up your hand or up your arm, those are times to stop and talk to your doctor mm-hmm. and see if physical therapy is right for you. Those are times to get up and stretch and move as well. Mm-hmm. Always. And your body's talking to you. Your body's yeah. telling you what it wants and what it needs. You yeah. just have to listen. So if somebody doesn't have a physical therapist, what's the best way? Like, do you, should you be going to your regular doctor and then they refer you? Or can you just be like... Google best physical therapist in my area. So my professional organization, the APTA, um, has a website and I usually link it when I teach my class. Um, Yeah, we'll link it in the show notes. So you can look for one on your own, see if you can get direct directly into the PT or you can call your doctor and go from there. And they'll just write a prescription and probably they'll say wrist pain. And then the um, physical therapist is the one who's going to further diagnose what exactly is going on. Because I mean, for carpal tunnel, the reason why I say with carpal tunnel syndrome, it might be that or it could be something else. Your nerves are coming from your neck. Remember we said hip bones connected to the leg bone. Everything's it's all connected. connected. Yeah. So maybe it's your wrist. Maybe it's coming from your neck because your mm-hmm. posture isn't great when you're knitting. Well, there she goes again. <laughs> So when yeah. we're when you say 
the best posture for crafting for us. Like, I mean, I feel like a lot of people sit on the couch Mm -hmm. or in a big comfy chair. I know we're getting kind of into like what we're going to talk about next, but yeah. Or p- posture specifically, like what are your recommendations for that? What are the checks that we should be thinking yeah. about? First of all, I always like to point out like I'm a physical therapist, but I'm not like you're not going to look at me and be like, she's a physical therapist. I don't have perfect posture. I keep thinking of the marvelous Miss Maisel. Did you oh, yeah. that? <laughs> it's up. Like I keep like, yeah. I don't. That's why every time someone fixes their posture, it's what I think of saying. Oh, um, I know. I know. Right. It's not about a static position. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep saying it's movement. So yeah, I look like a craft gremlin on my sofa late at (laughs) night. I'm crouched over. It's dark. Like that's what it looks like. And when winter comes, there's going to be a blanket. But if I stay in that position for hours, then that's Mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. Again, listening to your body. But if you have your place where you like to craft and you know that after you sit there for an hour that your back starts to hurt, then we got to look at some things, you know, is it a very soft, cushiony sofa? It's just changing your environment a little bit, or, you know, maybe putting a pillow behind your back to give yourself a little bit of lower back support. Maybe like me, you sit cross-legged way too much and it's sitting up and putting your feet on the floor. Yes. Your shoulders over hips, hips over knees. Absolutely. You want to try to have the correct alignment, but it's about changing that position. And if I'm Mm -hmm. sitting for an hour and my butt hurts, it's time to get up. Yeah. Like you're changing your posture. Isn't going to help that it's time to get up and move. Your body wants to get up and move. So that's going to be the key. There are some exercises you can do that I like to do when I'm crafting and I'm like, I don't feel like getting up because I'm not perfect. Like I'm not getting up. So I'll do some of these exercises while sitting with my knitting in my hands just to warm things up, move things up a little bit so I can keep going. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we will get to exercises here shortly. Are there any other like things to be looking for where it's like, okay, it's, it's time to go see somebody or is it pretty much everything that you had listed already? I always like to encourage people to think about what, especially when you have a new pain, like what have you done that's new? Maybe if you're a maker and you are uh, a knitter and you're a thrower and you decide I'm going to try to do continental and then two days later your one finger hurts. And so this is a true story. (laughs) This is me. (laughs) And your finger hurts on your left hand and you start panicking because you think you have arthritis and it just turns out you tried something new. And so it made your muscles in your hand hurt a little bit and that's okay. So- I feel this deep in my soul. I um recently was have been working on this embroidery project. I'm not somebody who has done a lot of embroidery and that's a lot of very specific hand movement and pulling and yeah. One day I woke she- up and one of my knuckles felt really strange and I was like this is it. I have arthritis. I'm yep, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I won't be able to do anything anymore. And like, you know, again, uh, brain riddled with anxiety. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, oh, wait, you've yeah. been doing embroidery a lot every single day and definitely taking a break helped for sure. I've seen the picture of you doing some lifting. Yes. And girl, this is so awesome. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. I love strength training and I like people need to see more badass women doing it. So I'm so, oh, I love it. It's so fun. I mean, you know, definitely not crafting related per se, but uh, I mean, just picking up a, a barbell with really heavy weights on either side and Sticker like your woman, mm-hmm. it makes me feel very powerful. But anyways, go ahead. Absolutely. My point being though, is how do you feel after? Oh, you so lift? good. So good. And how do your muscles, like, especially if you added a weight or did a different type of lift, like, what do your Mm. muscles feel like? It's very sore. (laughs) Very sore, right? So that embroidery is just on a smaller level. There are still muscles involved that you were, you were pretty much weightlifting them, (laughs) you know, like the equivalent of. Yeah. You were. Yeah. So like allowing your body. Yeah. And if you kept doing, I mean, you give yourself a break, but you keep doing that embroidery, those muscles are going to get stronger. That's not going to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's where that, like, what type of pain is it? 
So if you did something new and your body is sore, that's okay. That's actually strengthening. Those are good things. So before we jump into the exercises, um, let's talk about what we have seen in the making app that has been like <laughs> inspirational and awesome. So there is a maker, their name's Tiffany Wong. Um, and they wrote a pattern for 80s plaid leg warmers. I love them. They are stripy, uh, so with rainbow kind of stripes, and they just look perfect for stash busting, which I'm a big fan of. And they made me think, so I mentioned before, my grandmother taught me to knit. And when my son was born, she made him leg warmers. And it made me think of him. And we it was perfect because he put his diaper on and then his leg warmers on and they would fill his whole leg. And then as he grew, because he was tiny, and then as he grew, they would just be on his calves. And it was just they were just so cute. And they were great to keep him warm. Now I want leg warmers. So that is a pattern that you can purchase on the making app. I highly recommend. Back on July 24th, <laughs> when everybody was going to see the Barbie movie, I still haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm, I need to do it. I know I need to do it. And there's no reason except for I just literally have not had the time. So Paula A, their handle is O-N-E-H-T-1-A-M-A. They posted the uh, blouse that they made and like wore it to the Barbie movie. And it's oh, yes. so cute. It's like this hot pink and it's got like fringe along here. And it's apparently yes. the uh, Gertie Patsy blouse pattern. I don't know. It was just awesome. The Olive Trees and the Moon uh, yeah. is another person that I followed. And I believe because of some of their natural dyeing. Um, and it was absolutely gorgeous. On the making app, it's A L E K Z T H O M S art. And they post these like really awesome knit pieces of art where it has a quote. And so the <gasps> one that I was looking at says, It's amazing what vast sorrows can do to open us back up to the most essential action of loving out loud. Oh, it's oh crocheted. I'm sorry. It's crocheted. Crocheted. Oh, wow. It's so That's very cool. So definitely um, go check out that maker on the app. Should we head into the exercise portion of the show? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Sounds like fun. I mentioned before some simple things that I'll do while um, sitting and knitting. Let's be honest. We end up in this, this sort of posture, right? You see, I'm nicely like slouched down craft gremlin so you get in the craft gremlin position so the first thing that i like to do i will place a pillow in my lower back but the first thing i like to do is my shoulders and those are the shoulder circles and i don't even have to put my knitting down so i'm bringing my shoulders up towards my ears back and down up towards my ears going back and down. And I'm creating these circles, which you can start to feel that's going to pull your posture up already. So we're going to, we're going to get tits out already. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to pretend like I'm staring at you and we do it together. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> no, we did that's a good great. job. That's that great. great. That's kind of the, that's one of the first things that I'll do to get myself sitting up a little bit better with a little bit better posture. So already my posture is hopefully a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is even good just working at the computer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The next thing to do is then to stand up. Okay. Just stand up with your knitting, with your crochet. You don't have to stand up right now no, because the <laughs> camera is all awkward. But like literally, I'll just stand up. That'll get your posture in a better position. We're going to try to reverse by standing up. And then what you can do with your arms, so then you unfortunately have to put down your knitting or your crochet or whatever. But you can lace your hands out in front of you to stretch out those arms in front of you. And then you can come all the way back and stretch back. Okay. Oh so that is gosh. going to, yeah, already you need it. So bring those arms back up there. Oh boy. <laughs> bring those arms back up there. And then from there you can rock to one side and then the other. Okay. The back has been arched forward. Now we're arching it back. You're kind of leaning side to side. From there you can twist side to side like you're, you're twisting your spine like a washcloth to kind of wring things out. Simple stuff to do. You can do that in, in standing. We just did it in sitting. If you still want to feel crafty while you're doing it, 
You just pull the skeins of yarn and twist. <laughs> hold the yarn. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Or whatever you're using, you know. I mean, I feel like just with, with woodworking, you can have uh-huh. your tools, you know, a little bit your of weight. Tool, whatever you're using, inside, yeah. It just kind of helps with that. <laughs> okay, so we've done our twist. We've done yes. our, our hands out and up, and we've leaned. Uh-huh. We've done our shoulder rolls. Yeah. What else? What is next? Now, let's say that maybe you've done these stretches, and you still just feel like you need to get up, but you don't want to stop. I know this doesn't work for all the crafts, but have you ever taken your knitting for a walk? Okay. So I feel like this has been a very, like, I feel like there's been so many people who've been doing it lately. Like Kayla from Magpie Fibers. I've seen her wandering mm-hmm. around with her knitting. Yeah. Now I know that Andrea Mowry just put pushed like a hashtag for, I think it's our wander, wandering whips. So I think that might be why I have to say um, the her hashtag came out right after I started organizing a fiber walk um, at my local yarn store, which we're doing tomorrow. OK, so, so let you heard it here first. Andrea Mowry totally pulled this idea from first. Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but mean... it's, it was, I love it, though. I love it because I just just take your knitting for yeah. a walk. And even if you end up not knitting like you went for a walk. Mm-hmm. Um, walking is one of my favorite exercises. I um, love, yes. And the, the problem that I have is how do I do that and walk two dogs? You should get one of those belts. <laughs> oh my God. For okay. Your dogs. So I'm going to have the belts for the dogs and then I'm going to have the bag, yeah. with the yarn, with the knitting. And then I'm going to uh-huh. be knitting and uh-huh. no one is going to think that I am weird at all. Not at all. No, at all. no, gonna you're going to be normal. I'm going to be the coolest mm-hmm. person in my neighborhood. Absolutely. To keep with this theme of good posture and keeping mm-hmm. things balanced, what is an ideal bag for walking and knitting? Is it because I've seen wrist bags, I've seen mm-hmm like bags that crossbody bags like what's the best yeah. thing that you suggest for that if we're going to go on on a little walk with our fiber arts it's such a lightweight thing it i mean don't take a sweater on a walk um take us i mean swatch on a walk like don't, don't swatch take, walk do a swatch walk so you can have it on your wrist that's my favorite thing to do because i think it's easiest to manage the yarn mm-hmm. i mean i'm a big advocate of backpacks because that's uh a good uh, centralizing of the weight. And if you have like your ball of yarn, I guess that's a little bit harder. Um, I like the idea of the crossbody bag. I do know my best friend, uh, she (laughs) used to knit with a sweatshirt on and she would do color work and she would have a ball in each sweatshirt uh, pocket. So each side of the sweatshirt oh, pocket. Oh, okay. And she would she would be pulling yarn from one side and the other and doing her color work. That's smart. That's that's higher level. That's yeah. I haven't tried that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you could absolutely put it in your sweatshirt pocket if you wanted. I mean, you could knit yourself a sweater that had specific pockets to keep your for yarn. Your yeah. All right. That is a free idea for any designer. Just make sure that you say, tell everybody that you heard it on the Making Conversation podcast and where to find this (laughs) podcast and to listen to it. (laughs) Free idea. I guess that's more of a trade. We're trading here. Yeah, there we go. It's a trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are some tricks too. And I have um, the, I had the trick of, I was trying to knit the brim of a hat and it's ribbing and you know how long that takes. And I said that the only time I was going to do that is when I was walking. So I walked a lot to get that done. So you could also give yourself those motivations, those goals. Those, this is the thing I'm going to work on when I'm walking. If you have lots of projects like yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, I know you know. Started. Your oh problem is you have not even just knitting projects. <laughs> you just have too many, all the projects. Before I started working at making, my life was simple. <laughs> When it came to crafts. Oh, simple life. (laughs) I just had to deal with all of the knitting projects. Nobody else is allowed to show me any knitting projects, yarn, any embroidery, anything until I finish this. (laughs) Sure. That's I work in the wrong industry. (laughs) You do. do. (laughs) For that request. You've only done this to yourself. (laughs) I know it's true. Okay. So do you have any other exercises that you wanted to show us? Yes. Last one. 
we stretch our body, we move our body, but we also have to strengthen our body. And, and that's really important for our muscles. In my hands class, I have a lot of stuff that we do just for the hands. But lately, I've just been really excited about my simple sit to stand exercise for strengthening. So I brought some big, heavy anatomy books. Okay. So when I go to stand up, I will be carrying extra weight. But if you are not comfortable going to a gym and lifting those those barbells, that's totally fine. You yeah. could use books. Or I actually used um, during the pandemic when I, I was trying to do my strengthening at home, I was lifting, I had this container of like uh, sidewalk salt that was safe for oh, yeah. animals. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was like, I, I have it was like 80 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. So we're going to pause. Okay. I'm going to go get my weight. <gasps> yes. Yes. Even better. Okay. Let me get my Even better. back on. Stay here, bub. Okay. Even better. You got kids. I have you got my weight. Pets. When you're sitting in a chair, if you want to do the sit to stand exercise, the first thing that you're going to do is scoot to the edge of your chair. Sit as close to the edge as you can so your feet are on the floor underneath your knees. And then holding your weight. <laughs> and then I'm going to. Yep. We have to, we have to optimize for view here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Holding your weight, you're going to lean forward so you feel your weight go into your feet. And then you're just going to push yourself all the way up into standing. Seems real simple, right? And then mm -hmm. squatting back down, leaning forward, and bending your knees until you just come to the chair. Don't sit all the way down, mm -hmm. and you can press back up. Now, if you need to sit, thankfully the chair is there. But you're essentially doing a squat, and we're essentially doing a deadlift. We're just yeah. lifting a dog. So this you could do. What I love about this exercise is you can do this. Um, you don't have to use any weights. Maybe the weights are too much. Or for someone like you who is lifting heavier weights, you can still get some of that exercise at home, finding stuff around the house, <laughs> like your dog. Like my dog. <laughs> like so this dog. is, okay, let me get the microphone back. This is Marcello. <laughs> Hello, friend. This is my baby. There you go. Okay. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> but also, let me do one last thing about exercise. Please just do what you want to do. Yes. So this is part of the problem, I think, that we have with body image and what we're supposed to look like, what we're supposed to be able to do, even what we're supposed to knit or crochet or sew. Just do what you like. I don't like mm -hmm. you talked about running. Jen, I am right there with you. I'm a physical therapist. I hate running. I tried it. Yeah. I, and they're like, oh, you just whatever. You didn't get to that point. No, it's not for me. Yeah. I know what I like. I actually like walking. I actually really like walking hiking, walking through the woods. I like an uneven mm -hmm. trees. I want to be surrounded by nature. So then do that. Like if you like gardening, do that. If you like yoga, do that, you know, just find the thing that you love to do and do that and do it how you want. So I often find that people get so overwhelmed with like, oh, well, I need to get my heart rate up, you know, and do it this many times a week. And, you know, I should be lifting this much or whatever. Then you end up not doing it at all. Yeah. So just do the thing, just move and move the way you want. And that is okay. That's all that matters. Yeah. Going off of that, like when I first started weightlifting, I, it was, it was more of a, you know, it was more of the side of my brain that luckily I've been able to kind of talk through and quiet down of like, I need to look a certain way. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. Right. And so mm -hmm. I weightlift with a personal trainer Mm -hmm. Shout out to Rena, who hasn't just been so amazing the entire time that we've worked together for years. Mm -hmm. Because and I, the reason that I lift with with her specifically, you know, when it comes to like really heavy stuff, is because I'm terrified of hurting myself. Absolutely, <laughs> and actually, and I'm a physical therapist. Yeah. I have my doctor in physical therapy. I went to a YMCA and saw that they had weightlifting for women. And that was the first time I ever stepped foot in a weightlifting gym because yeah. same thing. It didn't look like a place for me. Right. So right. I went and I had someone show me how to use the weights and I loved it. Yeah. Love it. I, this is, I mean, like, obviously 
going back to what you said, people should move how they want and what makes them feel good. But if you've ever thought about weightlifting, especially as, um, uh, you know, female identifying person, and it's like scary Mm -hmm. because, you know, you just think of like the bros in the gym with, you know, the like huge muscles and (laughs) there are things that you can do and there are gyms that you can find that are really inclusive so the gym that I work out at in Seattle is called Rain City Fit and it is like so inclusive Mm -hmm. it is you know every body type there are gyms out there that will Mm -hmm. help you with that they're you know personal trainers but I think definitely movement is so important and especially as crafters where a lot of what we do is moving our hands and that's all. It's a very sedentary (laughs) activity. If anyone's watching or listening and you have fun ways of incorporating movement into your crafting life or whatever, we want to hear. We totally want to hear. Especially with your your crafting and walking that, um, you know, the idea was stolen. It's fine. But... uh, (laughs) Kidding, just kidding. Uh, no, we we love Andrew Mowry. This is not, we do. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. We're not here to start a war. We're here to <laughs> encourage people to move. Um, I'm gonna get banned from the knitting community. <laughs> Andrew Mowry is never gonna come on the making app now. Uh, anyways, and no idea is too small or too great because mm-hmm. I just feel like you never know what's going to inspire someone else. We're all here to lift each other up. So that's great. Okay. Tell me about what you're going to park tomorrow and you're, and you're knitting. Let's talk about what we're working on and like all of that. I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm on the Philadelphia side. So um, I teach at a yarn store called Pearls of Wisdom in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And I started, this will be our second, what I'm calling a fiber walk. So we meet up at a park near the yarn store go for a walk. We did it the, we do it once a month. Um, I'm hoping to keep that going through the fall. Um, We'll see what winter does for us. Um, And then afterwards we go to the yarn store for some light refreshments. Fun. (laughs) Meaning refreshments. Yeah. Fine yarn. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Refreshment. Refreshments and yarn. So what are you what are you working on right now? What are your projects? What are your whips? So I have so many whips. It's one of the projects I have up on making up. Um probably one of the first ones I put up. Um and I still haven't finished it. It's called the <laughs> the Hopewell Rocks Tea. Um and it's in it's actually in magpie fiber and it's this beautiful uh gold, coppery gold brown. Um and it's like a mesh pattern. So it's going to be a t-shirt. Ooh, nice. Yeah. And I'm really excited for it as like a layering piece. Um, but it's just taking me forever. Yeah. We're almost there. We're almost there. You'll get there. I believe in you. I'm allowed to talk now and I have to post it. I just finished another sample knit for Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Ooh. For, uh, because Candace just, she did the... Uh, the guest editing, I think, for Pom Pom magazine. Oh, yes, yes. So I did the Chinookwins pullover that they just posted. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun to knit. It was something I would have never picked to make because I would have never made that many baubles and I would have never wanted to put that much fringe on a sweater. It's on the sleeves and everything. Um, but I was so impressed with how, like, what a statement piece it is. I, I mean, as as we've talked about, I have lots of things on my list now. (laughs) Um, Of course, I have my um, embroidery. I'm going to just. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. And your little Ouija board. How cute is that? Oh, yeah. My needle minder. Oh, that's so fun. uh, Planchette. It's really cute. Um, I don't remember where I got it. So I'm sorry if you're like, where did you? I'm sure if you Googled needle minder planchette Ouija board you you would find it but I haven't worked on the embroidery for a little bit like right before flock I literally had like no time to do anything but work on flock stuff it's funny you know working for a an app that's all about making and crafting and then you don't have time to do making and crafting because of the work that you do it's sometimes funny sometimes sad yeah yeah (laughs) but I do it all for y'all because I just love we appreciate you Oh, I, uh, I just, I don't know. It's so fulfilling. So I picked up some 
lovely yarn at Flock and immediately got to work. So the first, without making lots of extra background noise, the first one that I cast on is the Lucid Tea by the Crazy Ant. Oh, oh, that color is just lovely. And this yarn is like the most fluffy, delicious. It looks like a cloud. It's a, it is a cloud, <laughs> but it's Porter Wool Co. Oh my gosh, Porter Wool Co. And it's their Silky Surrey. So I can't do mohair, unfortunately. It makes okay. me itchy. Um, but this is uh, 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. The colorway is just Mooring Skies on Puget Sound. It just makes me so happy because she's not from this area. And she likes, I'm pretty sure specifically named it that for flock because we were you uh, know in the seattle area for that but i am just super stoked to finish it so I i've it. been working a lot on it and then i do need to cast this on so that i can wear it before it gets too cold because um i know that it's going to take me a while between the two to get it done this yarn that i got it's uh, Junie and Sai, a dyer out of Snoqualmie, Washington. Oh, wow. And this is called One Hit Wonder. So if I remember correctly, like this is the One Hit Wonders that um, she does are one of a kind. Wow. And because it's one of those where she dies and then she's like, I don't remember what I did and I can't re replicate this. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I think that she has a couple of these up on her site right now. I don't know if they'll still be there by the time this posts, but Junie and Sai super excited about this because I'm going to be doing the um, Jesse May Designs mock tank. So many people were wearing it at Flock Fiber Festival. Yeah. Walking around. And at first, Val, who was my friend that was helping us there, we were like asking everybody like, what, what's your top? What's your top? What's your top? Because that's how we were getting like ideas to go with the yarn that we were buying. Sure. And almost everybody said it, it's the, wait, mini mock neck tur mini i'm gonna look it up hold on yeah <laughs> mini mock neck tank there it is okay sorry jesse i didn't mean to butcher that so much <laughs> but everybody that was wearing it no matter what color what that you know if they added stripes what body type they were looked so good in it yeah. and it was yeah. like everybody styled it differently and i was i'm just like dreaming of all the things that i could <laughs> to do with, Where? Yeah, with yeah. it and i'm so excited that i'm like i need to cast this on asap even though i'm still in the middle of the other one so i give you permission oh thank you oh and then the roof garden is still going i did a little bit of um harvesting yesterday and then stopped by my desk and forgot a pepper <gasps> Yay! Uh, so this is from my garden oh it's beautiful <laughs> I'm, for those listening, I'm holding up a red bell pepper. It's and beautiful. Yeah, she's not big, but she's cute and it's going to be delicious. Tasty. And I have plans this weekend for like some good taco making yes. for sure with this. Um, and my tomatoes, I like everything's everything's going well. Wonderful. I love, I love it. I love the gardening. I have um, I posted it on my making app feed, my pumpkin patch. And it's the coolest thing that I've ever done. It's, it was so easy. Um, my, my son wanted a pumpkin patch. And so I was like, sure. And all I did, it's called a digless garden bed. So I found the spot I wanted and I laid cardboard down in that area. And we had already just dumped the pumpkins from last Halloween in this spot in the yard. So I left that spot open and then we just covered it in compost and then we covered it in mulch. And it's taking over. It's like, it's, it's amazing. They That's have so grown awesome. and it's so fun to watch them grow. And we have so many orange ones. Some are still green and the flowers are beautiful. They open up in the morning and they close at night and my neighbors have bees. And I like to think that they like my yard best because they're yeah. everywhere and they're just yeah. in and out of those flowers all morning. It's just awesome. And it's like, that's the other thing that makes me so happy is being outside in my garden. Oh, I love so that. So you, you'll be seeing some pictures probably of pumpkins uh, this fall. Bring it on. Bless bless the making out feed with your pumpkin pictures. <laughs> yes, it will happen. I'm into More it. More will happen. 
as we end every episode, um, let's talk about what we are grateful for. So our little moment of gratitude, what are you grateful for this week, Mariah? Honestly, for being outside. Actually, before this podcast, before we met up, I've been outside all day and just preparing my back porch as summer is ending preparing for fall, my favorite season, just cleaning things up because I want that space ready for when the weather's just right, you know, to sit out there and, and knit. Mm-hmm. So I'm, so I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be outside and have a space where I can be outside. And today yeah. the weather was nice, was behaved. So I'm looking forward to more days where you can sit outside. I'm still in the mode of just a little bit more summer because I am uh, I love the sun. I am a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I love the sun. Yeah. But then when it's fall, I'm like, it's fall, it's time. Yeah. Now we, you know, we hunker down and we get our knitting and we just like, don't leave the house. Like I fully embrace that, but preparing I preparing for hibernation. Yeah. Yes. I've, right now I'm preparing for hibernation and I'm soaking in as much sun as I can. Yeah. So I've been doing dog walks in the morning for next weekend, I'm going camping with um, my friend Val, who I was talking about. And the best part about this is she has a converted van. So she bought a van and converted it. So it has like a little kitchen and everything. So that's fun. Oh, nice. But at night, because usually when we go camping in the summer around Seattle, there's like a burn ban, right? So it's not it's not this like idyllic situation of sitting around the campfire and hanging mm-hmm. out because you can't have a fire. So we like sit in her small van and knit and watch movies that we've downloaded. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> and drink wine and just yes, like Yes. Yes. It's, it's the best. I love it. Like we camped on the coast up by Forks and that was like the first time that I watched all of the Twilight movies. But it needed I needed to like that needed to be the situation that I watched them in. But um so I have been just like trying to soak in any little piece of sun that I can. I'm not a summer person either, but I think that's part of what I'm doing is I like being outside and it's preparing for the next season. So mm-hmm. and part of that is appreciating the sun and the time, the warmth now um, as I'm preparing for the next season. Mm-hmm. So it's that, and cause that, I feel like that transition we do a lot. We think of a lot in winter time where we're preparing our home to be in it <laughs> and hibernate and be warm yes um this was me preparing the outside for when we can i can still be outside in the fall you know um and enjoying the last bits of of summer even though i'm not a summer person that's fair that's fair yeah i'm also really excited um this weekend at uh la mercery amy of la and amy is going to be visiting and so i'm going to go knit on saturday which is technically tomorrow but in the past yeah. if you're listening to this episode or watching this episode <laughs> um and then amy's gonna come and take the ferry over midweek and we're gonna find somewhere to knit everybody in the orbit of the making app community is so wonderful and it's just fun to be able to I don't know, get to hang out with people that aren't in your city. So absolutely that's good. And is well, that what you're grateful for? Yes. I'm grateful yes. for all of the things I just talked about. I know. I just like word vomited gratitude. <laughs> Perfect. It's perfection. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was wonderful. Uh, if you are listening there will be a video on YouTube and I'll link it in the show notes so that if you want to like practice exercises along with us um and also see what my dog looks like (laughs) you can i also want to give a shout out to um so when i know we i keep talking about flock but that was like so much of my uh time over the last month or so and um when i was wandering around i was really excited to finally meet meet uh not bad brit brit in person And um, she was there representing the Makers of Color Collective with a booth and just like a bunch of amazing um, yarn and patterns and notions and all of that from the Makers of Color Collective. One thing that stood out, Andrea, the knitting PT, she sells a wrist and hand care kit. Yes. (laughs) PTandrea.com. And if you go to shop. Um, there's also a link right at the top that says wrist and hand care. Yes. And 
I know that you have worked with Andrea before. Yes, she's a wonderful um, person. And she does really, really great makers videos. If I'm the only PT that you know about in the knitting world, then you need to go find Andrea. She does yes, some amazing yes. work. Absolutely. And that wrist hand care kit is fantastic for makers. This has been so much fun. Yay. Yay. I enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Every time I like look at myself, I'm like, Pull your shoulders back, Jen. Tits up. You're <laughs> To join the very first social marketplace app made for makers, crafters, and artists, by makers, crafters, and artists, head to themakingapp.com. Download the app and join the amazing multi-craftual community. You won't regret it. Just so much inspiration and so many wonderful, wonderful humans. Did you know that you can also listen to the Making Conversation podcast in the Making app? Open the app, tap on Discover, and scroll down to Podcasts. From there, you'll see all of them listed. We've also started putting um, these up on YouTube if you haven't noticed. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. I am, I am a one, one woman show. If you're listening, there's a link down below to the episode on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, there is a link to listen. So choose your own adventure. If you've made it this far and you're interested in sponsoring Making Conversation or having Making at an event to collect content, amazing maker stories, vendor stories, etc., send us a note at hq at makingco.com. We would so very much appreciate it if you were to share the podcast with your crafting community, whether that's online or offline. Um, you know, having more eyes and ears always feels real good. So thanks for watching and or listening. And we'll see you in the making app.